All right, fast video, removing the timing belt on an early 90s Geo Metro one liter three cylinder motor, okay? I've done the slow part already, so we're gonna make this a fast video. And the sequence of events. You're gonna pop off all your stuff for the air cleaner, the nut off there, get that out of your way. Next step, you're gonna go to your water pump pulley, undo the four bolts. Everything on this is 10 millimeter, okay? So think Jeff Cooper, think 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter socket's gonna get 90% of what's going on here. There's gonna be a few points where we use extensions, that's fine. So, we're gonna pop this off. And when you pop that off, the belt's gonna come with it. Now, next things get a little tricky. Next step is gonna be, you're gonna have to jack her up, get it on jack stands, and remove the tire. When you get that tire off of there, you're going to pop out this panel here that had these little push-in rivet type things, little body panel push-in deals. Uh, you just pry those out and they'll come out. Now what's going to happen is that exposes the bottom of your, your pulley, your main pulley, it's also your uh, balancer. That you're, you're going to have one bolt at a time exposed that you get to with your 10 millimeter with an extension. You reach into that like that with the extension. You're going to be able to rotate this by hand and one of the things is that if you go to turn your extension it's just going to spin on you, right? So if you put the car in gear and I just hold this with with a, uh, a piece of wood, right? Just hold that with a piece of wood to keep the wheel from turning, the other wheels on the ground I can unbolt those one at a time. So once that's done, this, whoops, sorry about that, this will come out, and you'll notice that it's indexed onto the crank with that uh, little keyway there. So that's gonna come out. Then you're gonna be able to get at the uh, timing belt cover. Again, a bunch of 10 millimeter stuff, you may need to use extension on a few parts. You'll be taking out eight bolts, and you'll get that out. Then you'll be able to remove pieces of your timing belt, and um, uh, just clean things up a bit, uh, check it for oil residue down in the bottom. Check this for a lot of oil residue and stain, there shouldn't be a whole lot. There will be some, but that stuff tends to deteriorate the next timing belt and can take it out in a hurry. And uh, the other thing is, in diagnosing this, chances are you've, you've got to have the distributor cap out so you can tell the positioning on a lot of stuff and make sure that, that when this turns, this turns. Now, it's going to be a little tricky to turn because you're fighting against the valve springs. But we're going to get this thing lined up. We're going to show how to install it in the next segment, but it's pretty much reverse order. So I went quickly on this. I didn't want to bore you. But that's, that's how this thing's going to go, relatively simple and easy to get at. You're going to save yourself about 400 bucks doing this yourself. Reinstallation. So, I've already got this thing on and tested, but I'm going to explain to you a little bit of how I did it. It's going to be very tight. There's a tightness adjustment on the pulley down there. And basically, this this little uh, tensioner thing gets uh, uh, removed, and it's an elliptical machine part that goes off of a little tab, goes off of this thing. This little stud may have come off with your timing belt cover. It depends on uh, whether or not somebody used Loctite on the earlier install and how tight it was, things like that. So when you were taking that apart, that, that may have been one of the frustrating parts you were dealing with. When you go to install this, you'll rotate that all the way to the least tension point and it's still going to be pretty tight. So you wrestle that thing on once you got the timing marks lined up and then you can rotate it by hand while knocking this with a rubber mallet right here and rotate this, rotate this by hand with a, uh, I was using a, a ratchet and basically you do it in a tightening rotation, which is the actual motion of this, it's clockwise. And then kind of hammering that on so that the lower gear, it goes flush. Because when you install that, this, 
this little track here is what keeps that in track as it's rotating every time. If the thing keeps wanting to uh, kind of either go in or out or fight its way out the tension, you're going to play around with this so that it's nice and tight but not killer tight. Because if it's killer tight, it's going to want to keep walking off the edge of the gear and then cause like a scraping wear on the inside of your timing cover. And that's that's one of the indicators that the timing you got was installed too tightly. Sometimes I'll kind of stretch out, loosen up a little on their own, other times not. So tight but not killer tight. As far as lining up your timing marks, there's a tooth on this with on the uh, main crankcase gear there that's going to correspond with this keyway here. And it's an actual tooth on the gear. On the block, there's a timing mark tab that's the same width as the timing gear tooth. So as long as you line up that block timing mark the same as that uh, gear tooth, and you can kind of see it down in there a little bit, um, barely. Let's see if I can stuff the camera down in there. There, there you can see that. That mark is lined up with one of the tooth uh, right now. And now it's lined up with the not the correct tooth. Um, let's see if I can turn this to where it would be lined up with the actual correct tooth. I'm, I'm turning it with a ratchet. And once everything's assembled, it's a little tricky to turn. But basically it would be so that a particular tooth and this keyway tooth thing are going to be facing up onto that notch. The other thing is you'll be turning this one again clockwise with a ratchet until this mark right here on this extra hole is lined up with this notch right here. So again that's going to go to a particular tooth. Now in theory you could be off by a tooth and if you do that then the car may still run but you'll be making some adjustments over here. Uh, I would prefer that you just line those teeth up correctly when you get the straight side of the belt and on, on that side. As long as those line up correctly, you probably don't even need to retune the car. It helps, but it may not be necessary. So if you're doing this on the side of the road or in a trailer park or something like that, and you don't have the means to retune the car, this installation is still gonna get you down the road. Okay, it's still going to get you down the road. You can do a fine tune later on. You're still going to be all right. The next steps on this are going to involve reinstalling the timing belt cover. Then you're going to reinstall the crankcase pulley. And then you're going to install your water pump pulley and then put the water pump belt on, put the air cleaner back in. You're probably going to be able to drive away. Um, now, the other thing at some point in this whole process You'll need to put the uh, the wheel back on and get that that stuff back on too because reinstalling this pulley, you're, you're going to be doing that one bolt at a time from underneath with the extension bar. Uh, the whole socket set I'm using for this right here is just one of these little seven piece ones. I've got a 10 millimeter self ratcheting wrench. All the tools you need for this are quite likely going to be in your car's emergency kit anyway except for some of the socket extensions. That's it. And there's no highly specialized tools on this. You may not have a rubber mallet on you. You can almost just get away with using a block of wood instead of the rubber mallet. The idea is not to use something to manhandle this belt that could cut it or gink it in any way. You want rubber on rubber. Another thing you want to do is clean a lot of this. Did we go out of focus again? Damn. Uh, well, what I'm saying is more important than what I'm showing on this anyway. Uh, one of the things that's going to also be important is clean the gook and the crap out of there. That is a uh, 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 steam form uh, petroleum products that cause a lot of that road grime. It's inside the engine. It's heated. It's, it's steam form petroleum products that had condensed onto uh, engine parts and other parts around the car. Those, those petroleum products pick up grime, but, but they also become acidic, and they also become mildly solvent to other petroleum products such as belts and gaskets. And so the more you clean that stuff off, the, the longer uh, you're going to be able to get those other semi-rigid petroleum project, products to last. And that's one of the issues somebody came out with uh, 
when the timing belts wear out really quickly due to an oil leak, due to oil getting directly on the timing belt and then causing that to deteriorate quickly. And that's they, they say they've got service life as short as four or five thousand miles when that's the case. Again, in an emergency situation, you can still get down the road, okay? But optimally, you, you want all that clean, you want the leaks dealt with, and, and not have petroleum products getting on your belts or on important gaskets or hoses. Uh, petroleum products will deteriorate hoses, gaskets, and belts. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions, we're going to have uh, the comments section of this video open, and I will show one last little segment of this all put together. So, purrs like a kitten. I test drove it. Everything seems relatively happy. I got a little belt noise here, so I'm going to be kind of keeping an eye on things. Could be because I didn't make any adjustments on the uh, alternator and uh, water pump belt. I just put the pulley back on, kind of muscled it, seemed to work. The uh, no tuning over here on the uh, distributor. I just sent everything to the factory spec and bam, it, it seems to run the RPM range pretty well. Uh, we'll take it for another test drive, but I think we're going to be okay. Uh, also, in the part of this, we're uploaded uh, a little fuel filter change. That's pretty difficult to get at, but uh, I got a bunch of fingerprints and stuff here to clean up. If I wasn't stopping to make video on all this stuff, I think there's a lot of shade tree mechanics would be perfectly happy to take $100 for one of these. And uh, a timing belt change for 100 bucks. Gonna take the guy maybe two hours if his garage is reasonably well set up. Not, not the end of the world. It's probably at teenager level mechanic skill. So, you want to teach teenagers self-sufficiency. I, I think these metros are pretty good for that, okay? If somebody's trying to get into the whole realm of self-sufficiency, women, teenagers, people like that, should pretty much be able to handle everything on one of these cars.